Hello everybody, it's Len. How are you doing today? And welcome back to my channel. So, two weeks ago on FAD, I released an anime list that I called... Um, what did I call it? Promising new anime releases for early summer 2018 where I listed off in no particular order 10 anime titles that seemed promising from the description followed by my first initial impression after having seen the very first freshly released episode. Obviously since the first episode more episodes have now followed either reinforcing my first opinion or I totally swallowed my words and I spoke too fast and it's not at all what I thought it was going to be so I thought it would be interesting to give you my second opinion on the anime. Having now seen more episodes and gotten more into the series I thought it would be interesting to give you my opinion again. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense for me to do this. It, it seemed like a good idea at the start, but now, yeah, we'll see. Also, I want to include some series that didn't make it into the list, either just barely because I was hesitating between that one and another one, or it just didn't feel like it was worth mentioning. So I wanted to include this here in this little video. So 10 anime titles, and since I don't want this video to be too long, I'm going to be dividing it into two parts. So watch out for part two that should be coming out a few days after this video. So if you're ready, I'm ready, and let's get right into it. First, and again, in no particular order, this is just the way I wrote them down on my article. First, it's Satoriku no Tenshi or Angels of Death, and it's a horror game turned manga now adapted into an anime. Angel of Death follows 13-year-old Rachel who wakes up in the basement of a strange abandoned building with no memory of how she got there. As she wanders the halls looking for clues, she stumbles upon a scythe-wielding being intent on taking her life only to save it moments later as they both attempt to escape the mysterious building. So I had only seen the first episode when I wrote this description and I went on to saying that it had promised, that it seemed interesting, that it was creepy, there was really something about the creepy ambience of this horror anime. Now I've seen two more episodes since then and I want to say that it does feel very video game-ish and I'm appreciating that video game aspect of it because it somewhat feels like you're watching a story-driven gameplay if you know what I mean because since the first episode I feel like nothing really is happening. It's more about gathering clues and trying to make it out of the basement, the labyrinth where they're in. Yes, there are encounters and events, but it's very tame, I feel, for a horror anime. That is my second impression. I'm still curious on how it's going to go. Uh, I hope it gets a little bit more like, wow, boom, and a little more like making my heart race, but so far, it's quiet, it's interesting, and it's still a waited see uh, on my end for that one. Next one I talked about is Sunohara So no Kanarin Rin san, or Mistaker of Sunohara So. Tired of being treated as a girl because of his feminine looks, 15 year old Shina Aki moves to Tokyo for a fresh start in a new high school where he is greeted by enthusiastic caretaker Sunohana Ayaka and three other girls he'll be sharing a home with. It won't be easy being taken seriously as a man while fawn while fawned over by girls eager to take advantage of his cute looks. Now my initial reaction was, whoa, I don't think I'm the right target audience for this. It's very harem, it's very uh, niche. I never know if it's niche or niche, I heard it say both. I heard it said both ways, but I feel like it's a very niche anime. The harem genre and then the whole 15 year old that looks like an 80 year old being taken care of much more mature looking women. I don't know, I felt like I wasn't the right person to be watching this anime. And I can appreciate the art and this pastel colors and the character designs are really sweet. It's consistent in its animation. It's aesthetically pleasing, but story-wise it does fall a little flat. There are um, two, three small stories within one episode, but they don't really tie well together. It doesn't feel like it's really going anywhere. And I mean, something with my notes. <laughs> And I mean, there is, at least to me, a limit to how big boobs can be before looking really scary and gravity-defying. It's just, 
I like it, but I'm not getting into it story-wise. That's what I'm trying to say. And also, I'm, I am put off by that 15-year-old kid that looks eight and all these girls fawning over him. It's maybe not for me. That is my second impression and opinion on this series. Okay, we have Isekai, Maoto, Shokan, Dorei, Majutsu, or How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. I'm sorry if I pronounce these really badly. It's, I'm trying, okay? Why am I putting this away? Uh, Shuddin Gamer Sakamoto Takuma is one of the most powerful players in Cross Reverie, an online playing video game MMORPG where he's known as Diablo the Demon King. That is, until he finds himself summoned into the game itself, where his lack of social skills are hidden behind his mighty Diablo persona, a role he chooses to entertain as he takes on as he takes on the adventures of the fantasy world. Okay, not gonna lie, MMORPG, I'm not that familiar with it. It's not really what I'm usually interested in, so this was quite new to me. I know the stereotypical MMORPG, I know what to expect, but still, I was really taken aback at how sexually charged this series is. Don't get me wrong, I laughed so hard when all the sexy things happened. It was hilarious, the humor is quite good, again, the art and the animation is quite good, it's decent, character design, mm, kind of seen it before, but all in all, it's a decent looking anime. Now my issue with it is that, sure, the humor is good, I'm laughing, the, the jokes are funny, the sexiness is funny, it's a little overly sexy at some points, but sure, why not entertain that target audience that this series was made for? But to me, the main storyline, the main plot, it's not interesting. I'm not interested in it. I can't get into it. And I have a feeling that once the jokes have gotten a little old and like overdone and repetitive, maybe it will just start falling flat. It hasn't so far, but I'm I'm not interested in the main plot yet. I mean, like I said, the jokes are cool. The fighting is not bad. The fighting scenes are, are somewhat interesting and what really makes it interesting for me is the main character because yeah he's an otaku but once he's in the game he fully plays on his role of Diablo he, he like fully gets into it and I find that endearing in, in some way it's not the shy otaku who's like what's happening to me no he's like fully in his Diablo um, like role I kind of like that but where will this go will it hold up I'm not sure, unfortunately, but we'll see. We will see. Again, I'm not the target audience, but I can appreciate it. And so far, it's, I mean, it started out really funny, but now through watching a few more episodes, I'm like, where is this going? I don't know. <sighs> I'm dying of heat here. Okay, Banana Fish. Adapted from its original manga 30 years after the series' original release, Banana Fish is one of the most highly anticipated animes of the summer for all old school fans. The story follows ruthless gang leader Ash Lings at a time where he rebels against the hand that raised him and made him who he is today. When it turns out that the latter, power thirsty Papadino, might hold secret information about Ash's brother, suddenly gone mad, loyalties are questions and suspicions raised. When Japanese photographer Eiji Okamura arrives in New York, he becomes the perfect example example of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I have been enjoying Banana Fish since the very first episode. I, I really, really enjoy it and so far so good. All, up until now, I'm really enjoying it. This said, I haven't read the original manga, so I don't know how well this adaptation holds up compared to the original, but I really, really like it. I like the old school vibe, the art, the animation, I like the music, I like the different settings because the story is set in New York so it's a little different. I, I love how the story is built. It feels solid, it feels good, I can properly get into it, it's intriguing, it's thrilling. Um, I don't know what more I can add except that I really like it and I suggest you go watch it. Okay, let's read How to Can't Receive. When happy-go-lucky Haruka moves to sunny Okinawa, she quickly discovers a passion for beach volleyball and finds herself teamed up with her cousin Kanata, who had given up playing, discouraged by her short height. Through Haruka's enthusiasm and determination, though, she could be convinced to get back on the sand and competing once more. Now, let me tell you something before we get into this, because 
For me, personally, I find it difficult to get into competitive sports anime. Like the whole genre for me, I want to like it, but I feel like it's hard to find something that sticks out from the rest. It does feel kind of repetitive, to me at least. I know it's a very popular genre, so don't come at me, but I find it slightly repetitive. And reading through this, it sounds like something we've already heard before, like somebody's quit their passion, something they're really good at, but somebody else comes along and they get back into the... Yeah, okay, enough about that. But <laughs> this said, I really like how to kind of receive. I was impressed. I was thoroughly impressed because at first, uh, my, my first worry was girls in bikinis on the beach in summer playing sports. How much fan service are we going to be talking about here? Is it going to be fan service, sports, and story? In which order is it going to go? Is it going to be distracting? But no, I was pleasantly surprised because sure, there are some interesting shots in there, girls in bikinis, cute girls, but it all holds up together. It's not empowering. It doesn't take over. Everything's properly put together. There aren't a hundred backstories yet and the art is good, the animation is good, the colors are so vibrant and summery and it's such a happy series even though there are darker themes involved. It makes me feel good to watch it and, and I'm even getting into the whole sports thing. Turns out all I needed was um, girls in bikinis and beach and wave somehow. So yes, how to can I receive? I will continue watching. I am enjoying it and yeah. Okay, that's it for me for part one. The next five I will do in part two, but before I go, I want to mention a few animes that didn't make the list. For one, Asobi Asobase. I know, it should have been in the list. I see it now after have, having seen a few more episodes of it. I'm really enjoying Asobi Asobase. Um, let me read, I didn't write a description for it, so let me find the one on the web about it. Hanako, an athletically proficient yet thick-headed student with a weird fashion sense, plays a game with the American transfer student Olivia. However, their vigor irritates their classmate Kasuki, who dislikes playing games since she has always been teased by her sister for, be for being bad at them. With a turn of events, it was found out that Hanako is terrible at English. Thus, she asked her foreign classmate Olivia to help her. But Olivia, who was born and raised in Japan with foreign parents, can't actually speak English at all. Watch over these three girls' surreal school life comedy. Okay, I read that so badly, I'm so sorry. But yeah, that's basically the gist of it. And when I saw the first episode, I was kind of like, eh. It's a story that's built on a lie, so I had a feeling that the next episodes were gonna be like lies above on top of lies, just to like cover the initial lie. And I was like, I don't know about this one. The next episode totally proved me wrong because already the art is amazing. Like literally, the art is fantastic. It's a little work of art. The expressions are priceless and the color palette is... I mean, everything about the art is really good, but I was iffy on the story. But then the story turned good! So... <laughs> as of yes, I say, I really recommend it. I'm sorry I didn't put you on the list. You definitely deserve to be on the promising release list. Same a Bob. It's a good laugh. It's a good watch. It's... it's all good. I need to find new adjectives. <laughs> it's good. Okay, and the second one I want to mention, and that is not on the list, is... I can't even remember the title. Backstreet Girls Goku Dolls. A group of three Yakuza failed their boss for the last time. After messing up an important job, the boss gave them two choices. Honorably commit suicide or go to Thailand to get a sex reassignment surgery in order to become a female idol. After a gruesome year training to become idols, they successfully debut with overwhelming popularity, much to their dismay. This is where their tragedy truly begins. Now, when I read this the first time, I was like, this seems hilarious. Bitterly disappointed. Now, I stopped after the first episode, so maybe the story is good. I don't know, but the thing is for me is that I couldn't at all get over the art especially the animation. I couldn't get over it. It's so bland. I mean, 
if it was just the art style that was kind of iffy, I would have been like, okay, I've seen some badly drawn anime before and I've made it through, but everything about the art and animation isn't not good at all. It's very static. It's you see the same shot like one shot, shot one, shot two, shot three, shot two, shot one. It's like the same over and over again and the colors are uh, everything. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can get over this fact. It's probably mainly me, but I couldn't get over it. I was infuriated watching this series, this first episode, which is so sad because I'm sure the story could be interesting, but from what I've seen, it was an absolute no for me, not worth mentioning on the list. And um, I feel bad because obviously it's a piece of work. People have worked on it and it comes from a manga, I think. So there has been some creativity poured into this project and I'm just like, I hate it. <laughs> It's a big word. I'm exaggerating. I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. And I'm sorry, Goku Dolls, but I will probably not be watching the rest. Maybe if I have nothing to watch, and I'll just be like, okay, I will give the second episode a try. But so far, I mean, no, it's an absolute no for me. Okay, that's it for part one. I'll see you over in part two in a few days. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. And oh yeah, don't forget to check out the original article on that if you already want to read the next ones for part two. See you then, already well. Bye.